Hey everyone, just real quick, I wanted to talk about something that seems to be a source of confusion, uh, especially if you've been using Lightroom and Photoshop for many years and you maybe want to stop using those programs or you just want to add Luminar uh, to your list of tools that you use for post-processing. But a lot of people are confused about how Luminar is set up because Lightroom is set up as a catalog. And so if you're in Lightroom, and you make changes in Lightroom, Lightroom's very happy and it knows what you're doing. If you make changes outside of Lightroom, if you start changing file names in here or moving something around, Lightroom gets very upset. It doesn't understand what you're doing outside of Lightroom. Okay, so Luminar is in fact set up a little bit differently. Okay, now it does have a catalog, but the catalog is maintaining the information about what you do to these images. So if you make any image adjustments, assign star values, favorites, it will maintain that within the catalog. Okay, but what I want you to see here is something that is a little bit different than what you might be used to in Lightroom. Okay, so I'm going to add a folder. So you have to point Luminar to the images on your computer it will automatically show you all photos based on the date that you took the photograph. This is something that Luminar does automatically and many people are able to organize their images by date. I am not one of those people. I never use this shortcut. Um, you can if you just want to look at images that were taken in a particular year, that's great, but I prefer a, a folder structure. And it was a folder structure that I started back in Photoshop Bridge, uh, which was the first program that I ever started using. And uh, it has just continued with me into Lightroom and, and any other program that I happen to use. So if you want to add images to Luminar, if you want Luminar to see them so you can work with them, you have to click the Add button. Okay, so I'm going to go to my desktop where I have created this folder called Luminar test. So we'll just add that folder and it is currently empty. There's nothing in it. So you don't, you're not going to see a little drop down here. There's no sub menus. It is just an empty folder and here it is. Luminar test is an empty folder. Okay. So what if I add some images to that folder? So I'm going to take them. We'll just go down a few images here and I'm going to take them from another folder and I'm going to put them in here. So there's Luminar test. And if I go back to Luminar, there they are. I didn't have to import anything. I didn't have to tell Luminar that I made changes outside of Luminar. If I had done this to a folder that Lightroom is managing and I had done that exact move right here within Finder, Lightroom would not know that those images exist until I imported them, until I told Lightroom that you have to see these images. Okay, you have to manage these images. So here I am, I'm in Luminar test. And what if, let's go back here again, I take these first four ones out of here. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the Luminar test folder and I'm gonna take these first four out and I'm just gonna throw them on my desktop real quick. They're gone. Okay, so once you point Luminar to one of the folders on your computer somewhere, and this could be on an, if you want it to manage an external hard drive or anything like that, once you point it to that folder, it doesn't matter if you make changes within that folder outside of the Luminar program, it will just see it. But I just wanted you to understand that fundamental difference, especially if you have gotten used to Lightroom and you've gotten used to how that catalog works. The Luminar library is a little bit different. It's a little bit, I think, more forgivable uh, if you make changes outside of Luminar, which is a habit I had to break when I started using Lightroom because I was perfectly content changing file names and moving folders around in my Finder and Adobe's Bridge had no problem following that because it's just a browser. And this is much the same way. So it's just looking at this folder. But the first time you come in here, you have to point it to it. You have to tell it where to go. So the first time I wanted to load all of my images, and there you can see there's 10,120 in this folder. All I had to do was point it to this particular folder on my hard drive 
and it automatically brought in every other subfolder that's in there. So right now I am currently looking at all 10,000 of my <laughs> photos, which is ridiculous. We don't need that. So I hope this helps you kind of understand that, that basic difference between Luminar and Lightroom if you are getting into using this program and you are somebody who's been using Lightroom for many years. This is treated a little bit differently, uh, but just be very, very careful if you are going to use the library at all. If you're going to change any folders or file names or anything within Luminar, Lightroom won't forgive you. It won't be happy with you. So just make sure that if you are managing your photos within Lightroom and you want to use Luminar as a plugin, don't worry about all this folder stuff. Just bring everything straight to the edit make your edits and then and then bring it back to Lightroom and you should be okay. All right, have a great day y'all.